Hello YouTube and Mr. Forks, welcome to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. Hopefully the sound will be much louder for your delicate ears. Um, so today we will be taking a look at motion stabilization inside of Final Cut Pro 10. Now this is my personal favorite feature of Final Cut Pro 10. Now this was a feature that was always in motion and I have actually got a tutorial coming out um, well, it'll be out now um, for the new motion on how to do this in motion. So let's say you prefer using another editor like Adobe Premiere Pro or Avid Media Composer. You may still want the motion smoothing functionality and for £35 you can buy motion which allows you to very quickly import a, f uh, a video clip, smooth out the motion of a clip and send it back to your editor. However, Avid already has this feature and you can send a clip to After Effects but only in the new Adobe CS 5.5. So having it built straight into the editor like, like Avid Media Composer um, is great but it's not as simple as how it is in Final Cut Pro 10 and in Motion it's essentially the same. But if you are interested in just using single clips inside of Motion then be sure to check out that tutorial as well. So what do I actually mean by smoothing out a clip? Well, we just zoom into my timeline here. This is the clip, the uh, focal clip. You can see that if we scrub through, we've got a nice tracking shot. You can actually see a little bit of the track. In fact, if I just extend this clip out, just so it lasts a little bit longer. If we scrub through, you can see that we're, we're trying to dolly in or track in, um, whichever phrase you prefer. However, if we actually play it, you can see that the clip isn't that smooth. You can see that around the edges, there's a little bit of shake going on. Um, don't look at the center, but if you look, say, at this corner, you can see that that grass is shaking all over the place. That is not the clip we want. In fact, I'm just going to get rid of the audio to uh, ease your pains. And so what we need to do first off is select the clip um, be sure to turn on the skimmer if you really want to quickly check the clip see if it needs it um, if you didn't know already as I may have mentioned thousands of times these clips are all from my upcoming short film Husky which will be out early November um, even though the trailer says August we've had some delays to say the least so Select the clip, press I to show the inspector, and if you're already showing the inspector but you're seeing a load of gobbledygook, be sure to check the video tab so that you're in the right tab. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, depending on how many effects you've applied already, um, will determine how far down it is, you want to check the stabilization uh, button. And you can see instantly it's zoomed us in a little bit on the video. Um, what do I mean by zoomed us in? Well, basically, the way it's going to work is is going to analyze the intended motion of the clip. We're just going to try to, and then it's going to move the clip to kind of counteract the accidental movements, and then it's going to zoom us into the video a little bit so that we don't get any like black edges. Um, for instance, let's say there's an accidental move to the left, so it moves the clip to the right. Um, that would then give you a black edge because obviously there's there's not a piece of video here it's just moved it over just to um, make it feel more stable and it actually manipulates the image a little bit as well but that is the basic line of what's going on so now you can see that this button's checked we've got a few sliders here you want to play around with these to work what works best but if we just go ahead and hit the space bar to play back you can see that now it's much smoother and like I said again check this grassy corner here you can see that that is a lot smoother than before if we just turn it off now press play you can see it's all shaky this is going up and down an awful lot and turn on stabilization bam really really smooth if we turn the um, translation smoothness and everything down to really low you can see that it's shaking again. If we turn it all the way out full, you can see it's going to be very smooth, but the problem you're going to face is that you're going to restrict the intended movement and also it's going to be zoomed in even more. But you can see now that is very smooth. Um, and obviously the problem with zooming in too much is that 
you then don't get the framing that you may have spent ages adjusting when you're trying to actually film it. For instance, you may be like, actually, I don't like this shot entirely because I think it needs to be slightly wider, so you move the camera back a little bit. And then obviously when you apply the stabilization, it's then zoomed in and just counteracted everything you worked hard to achieve on the day of filming. So we zoom in, nice and smooth, not too over the top. I might just boost up the scale smoothing a little bit. The reason scale is important in this shot is obviously because you're zooming into the shot, that is one of the biggest things that will be affected. Position, because it goes up and down, and the rotation when it rocks, um, well, rotates, as it were. And it will analyse it as a whole, but you can affect it the different bits accordingly. Rolling shutter, um, I will do a whole separate tutorial on that, but basically the way most digital SLRs work, 99% of them, is that they will record the top half of the image, then the bottom half of the image, maybe like a second later. Um, well, no, not a second later, but a, a, a millisecond, milli millisecond. And sometimes this can cause a jelly effect where you've got the top half is of someone's head over here, but because you've panned the camera really quickly, the bottom half, the head will still be over here. And then it'll go along and you'll get, it'll look like it's been stretched, um, like jelly, maybe. Um, but th that's basically what rolling shutter is. I'll, sh I'll show that another time. But obviously, this is great, but you need to be careful where you use it. Let me show you one more example. You can see this clip here, if we just turn off all the effects. Okay. So here is the original clip. You can see it's awfully shaky, it's trying to be a tracking shot of our cyclist, and it's really not very smooth at all. So if we then turn on stabilization and had our settings at a reasonable setting, you can see, look how much that shot is zoomed in and motion blur is basically the blurring of an image um, caused by motion or movement of the camera and motion blur is actually really important in allowing the human eye to interpret the still images which is essentially what video is as fluid motion and you can see now you are still getting the blurring artifacts that were caused by the camera movement like there, especially, this camera angle is meant to be still, but you can see it's all blurry because there was camera movement here that Final Cut's now removed. And then you get a really blurry, horrible looking image. That's really awkward and not very nice to watch. And you'll see it keeps on like flickering, blurry and unblurry, just depending on what movement there was. So really be careful with how much you use this. And, and sometimes a shot like this, that is a far more respectable shot than when it's completely zoomed in and blurring and flickering all the time. So don't overdo it, but it is a great feature. It's really easy to access, and obviously, because of Final Cut Pro's render system, it renders in the background with no hassle. Um, so you could stabilize one shot, go on, stabilize another shot, quickly skim it to check that it's all good, um, and then it will render them all in the background. So this is stabilization inside Final Cut Pro 10, really easy. Uh, one more quick tip, I'm going to do a tutorial on some specific effects because I believe some effects filters inside of Final Cut Pro deserve their own tutorial just to go over some of the features they offer because some of them are really cool. Basically, once your clip has been zoomed in um, through stabilization, you may notice when you go full screen that it's it feels blurrier, and that's obviously because it's kind of less than the pixels. The pixels are now stretched a little bit more because it's been, they've been scaled up. Um, Command Shift F, by the way, to go into full screen mode, and just press Escape to exit. And so let's go ahead into the effects. So click this button here, and then in the search at the bottom, if you type grain, we just drag film grain onto our image, not too much, do it down to about that looks alright actually sorry, you don't really want grain, you want noise, noise works better both ones can work, but noise is far more preferable. Okay, so in noise, 
check it to be monochrome otherwise it's going to add like some pink pixels in amongst green you really don't want that you want gaussian gaussian noise you can see it, that's obviously way too much so turn it down a little bit even 0 0.2 i reckon 0 0.2 Oh no, 0 0.02 was what I meant, 0 0.03. Now when we enter full screen, um, obviously there's a couple of alterations you need to make, but now you can see that every single individual pixel is differentiated. And this may sound a bit daft, but that is a really very quick way to enhance an image. Um, let's say you import a standard definition image into your project, Add a little tiny bit of noise, ideally you want it to be 0 0.2 or 0 0.1, sorry, 0 0.01 or 0 0.02, at the moment this is 0 0.03. And that gives it noise that makes it appear um, to be using up every single pixel, i.e. high definition. And obviously because this is zoomed in, this is a way of adding detail back into the image. What you could then do, obviously if we um, turn it into a compound clip, Actually, no, sorry. If we just go into um, color correction. Um, by the way, there is a slight glitch where sometimes color correction doesn't work. The um, simple way around it is if we just go into window and press show color board, that's going to take us straight into our color correction. Um, and basically, go into exposure, and if we just dip the blacks, that's just going to take some of the blacks that were distorted by the noise, i.e. adding in a few brighter pixels in amongst the blacks. Um, this will just scoop that up and put some of them pixels back to being black back to black that could be a film name maybe and so let's let's change this to 0 0.01 bam come on shift f press space bar to i'm just holding it on the back button in fact if you press j then it will play backwards and then press k to pause it um, and there you go, look, we've got a nice image, it's a little bit sharper, and we've actually got individual pixels that will differentiate that. Obviously the face is slightly out of focus, and nothing can fix that, even a sharpening filter won't be able to fix that indefinitely. But, very quickly, we have stabilised a clip, in fact, if I just play back a little bit more. So, let's go ahead, press spacebar to play, and you can see what we've achieved. Uh, please note that when it's actually playing back it doesn't play back at full resolution you can tell it to in the preferences but it's better to play it back for smooth playback but the bottom line is we've now got a really nice really smooth shot that cuts into the scene really nicely and makes your filming look really professional so you can just run around with the digital SLR I don't advise it but you can do it and then you can make clips look nice uh, just a quick note if you go over to my website which is danallenfilms.com and go over to the contact page then I've now set up a system where you can donate um, to help me provide great new tutorials for you guys or support my filmmaking and you can specify when you donate any sum of money and every donation is greatly appreciated um, to help you guys out um, to help me to help you so a nice little friendship circle we got going on so thanks for watching and I'll be back soon with some awesome new tutorials uh, and some new films, whatever you're here for, you know. Um, see you guys later.